Hey guys, so, um, Clutius here with another video tutorial for you. Um, this hopefully won't take too long, but one of the things I had most, uh, requests for after my time lapse, <coughs> sorry, my voice is going a bit today, um, was the foam, like, dome base. Um, I was asked about that a lot, and balaclava, so today I'm going to talk to you about how I make both of those. Um, so, you'll need some basic tools here. I've got polystyrene or styrofoam mannequin head. This is just used, um, obviously, to, as a base. Um, you'll need some foam. This is half inch foam. This is what I use for all my bases. It's great. Um, you'll need some black lycra or spandex fabric for the balaclava. You can use any kind of fabric. I just prefer lycra or spandex. Marker pen, uh, craft knives, utility knives, box cutters, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've got a range of big ones and small ones. Uh, don't ask why, I just use them for different things. Scissors, simple scissors, tape measure, and a glue gun. Um, so that's all the basic tools that you're going to need. Um, tools and materials, I guess. Um, make sure you stock up on glue sticks, there's nothing worse than running out glue sticks. So, step one is you need to make up a balaclava. You can buy one, um, a lot of people do that, I prefer to make them. So, it's really simple doesn't have to be anything fancy, it's just a tube of fabric Ta -da, that I've sewn up with a rounded top for your head. What I like to do is fold the fabric in half so you don't sew down one side because this is the side that I'll put at the front of the face because um, you'll be cutting eye holes and nose and mouth holes in it and you don't really want to cut through a seam. So this so far is basically just a straight stitch on the machine Really straightforward. I, I often sew them by hand, but I did this quickly this time. Um, make it to the sides of whoever's head you're going to be making the suit for. Um, it just slips on like that. Really straightforward. Doesn't take long to do. Um, and what I will say is I recommend making this first. Uh, I've, I've done suits before where I've lined the heads at the end. Do not do this. Uh, <laughs> It makes it so much more difficult to line it. Um, you can't line it straight, because what's good is being able to put your hands through the eye holes and being able to glue the balaclava around the eye holes, which is difficult when you've got eyes glued in there. I've done it before without eyes glued in, and that wasn't so bad, but just personally, take the time to make or buy a balaclava first. If it's gonna take you another hour, whatever, I just whip this up in, I think, about seven minutes. Just cut some, cut some fabric, pin it, sew it, you're good. Um, so I think that's it for prep. Obviously next step you're going to need your half inch foam to make your thing with. I don't think I'm going to have quite enough of this so I've just got a bit of this that can go on the top. Um, it'll all be blended in and stuff and by the time you add all the facial features the, the, the width of this doesn't matter too much. You just don't want anything thicker because um, it obviously will impact the size of the head. This is as, as thick as I would ever go. This is a teeny bit thicker, but I'm not going to be using it for the most part. Um, so, so yeah, let's let's start on making our base. Okay, so now we're ready to start actually making our dome for our, our mercy head. Um, I've actually cut from both sides of this, so it doesn't have a completely straight edge. But what you want to do is make sure your straight or straightest edge is at the bottom. Um, that's just sort of how I always do it. It helps me, uh, you know, work out the guide best. Um, I've also got this huge steel ruler, which I forgot to mention. Um, this is 24 inches long, and this is great. I really like this. It was a good investment. So I'm going to be making this for a standard 23 inch head. This is just short of 24, so I'm going to cut this down slightly. Obviously measuring up is nice and easy. There you go, simple, just 23 inches, and then you'll just want to Cut that one straight along there. Yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry guys. I'm suffering from like hay fever or cold, I'm not really sure. Um, there you go, that's cut to the right length. This will go around the head. This is 25 in uh, 23 inches round, but sometimes uh, it struggles to stretch a little. I don't really know why. Um, 
but this is might be 22 and a half. I'm just gonna find out. Uh, um, the only problem with styrofoam heads is, yeah, this is 23 around. The only problem with styrofoam heads is they're really light and they fall over really easy. I do have a plastic one too, but it's a little bit larger and I don't really want anything larger. Um, put my leg back in the marker. I don't really need that now. So now you want to measure the height. Um, the height's not too difficult to judge. Um, I generally just use my face and just that there. Oh, wait. And just just gauge it that way. But um, then I'll upscale it or downscale it according to the size of whoever I'm making it for. Um. A lot of the time I go 10 inches, it will just get cut, so it doesn't make a huge difference, it just depends on how much foam you want to waste really. So if I make this one 10 inches tall, cut that one along there, pretty straightforward, it does help to just check they're the right length on the ends. Um, you can also do three 10 inch marks just to make sure they all line up properly. But it's not a huge issue, really. And then just cut that one. There you go. And now you have this foam sort of tube, which will go over your head. We'll start working on the uh, the curvature of the top and all that in a moment. Um, what I like to do now is find the middle point because you're going to use this to base where your eyes and mouth go. And just draw a line through there. And that's just going to be the midpoint of your face. Um, nice and easy. Uh, one thing I will say is make sure you always draw on the same side because else you'll have the marker facing inwards at some points. This isn't really a problem, especially because we're going to line it, but it, I just prefer to avoid the risk because you don't want to end up sweating while you're wearing it and then you get like red all over your face. It's kind of weird. Um, so now we've done that part, it's sort of a choice here whether you want to glue it on and then work on it, or work on it and then glue it on. Um, I think I might glue it on and then work on it, because um, a lot of the time if you've already glued this, there's a lot of friction created when you try and pull this down over here, so you end up deforming the balaclava underneath, and it can be really uncomfortable if you get wrinkles in it. Um, is that what I'm going to do? Yeah, I think so. Um, one thing that it does help to do is measure out where your eyes and mouth are going first. Um, I generally pick a... a
You can use scissors, completely fine. Just personal preference from, you know, trying both in the past. I wouldn't even say you need these for the, the majority of the foam work. Um, definitely for cutting out fur you're going to want them, so if you don't have some, buy some. <clears throat> but as far as the foam work goes, it's not a necessity. Ooh, I lost the head, it fell. <clears throat> right. So it's all very rough. Um, once I glue on the eyebrows and the cheeks and the muzzle and start blocking out where the actual features are going to go, um, I end up cutting out all of the hollow area anyway. I just think it helps gauge more than anything. Because getting a good fit of a fursy head is, is difficult. Um, one thing that can be a problem is everybody has different shaped faces. Different, uh, you know, sizes and things like that. Um, I've made something before. Um, I had the same head measurement as the person I made it for. It was a friend. Um, and where I could see out the eyes, this other person couldn't. Um, because the distance between their eyes and the top of their head was a lot farther than mine. So their eyes were down in the muzzle somewhere where mine were in the eyes. Um, so yeah, things like that can happen. So get as many measurements as you can if you're, you know, taking commissions or anything. Okay. So this is basically just gonna go around here like this and make this this really crazy scary face. <laughs> um, one thing you may notice is the eyes are either too far apart or too close together. Um, these are actually just right, thankfully, but it can happen. It's a bit of a pain when it does happen. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take my glue gun. Um, And just put a bit of glue either side of the face and I'm going to use that to just tack this onto the balaclava not tightly just lightly glue it on keep it on there for a bit while you work um one thing I was this is quite large for what I normally do um but the suit that I'm going to be making is going to have a large muzzle so um, but remember, you can always cut things out bigger, but adding things, you know, you can always, if I made this too small, you can always cut it bigger again afterwards. But if it's too big, it's a lot more difficult to make it smaller. It's not so bad with foam because it's all just sculpting anyway. Okay, now at the, the widest point of the head back here, I'm wandering off camera here. At the widest point of the head, um, what's there? You're just going to want to go down a little bit from that widest point and just take a little mark. And then just slope this in a little. It just makes getting the head on and off easier, um, in my opinion, because it opens up the, the area there. If you just glued all of this, um, the head down here is smaller than up here, obviously, so you're not going to be able to fit your head in unless you add zips and whatever, but I'm not a fan of doing that, not on toony heads, because you don't need that kind of fit. Again, you can use scissors or a craft knife, up to you, but just, just cut those bits off, nice and easy. Um, I try not to add too much glue at this stage, in case I need to alter the size later on. Um, the last thing I will do, I won't glue the, the foam around the back. Um, a, a, there will be a little bit there, but I won't glue a load there. Um, but that's sort of the last thing I do really. 
uh, you know, once it's furred and everything, because then I'll sew the bottom of the balaclava to the neck. Um, so, you can add a bit more glare around the face here. Not a lot, just a bit. Like so. This is all going to be glued and sewn together and it's going to be very robust once it's done. Um, so at this early stage you can just tack it. Only if you, you're going to you know, make it stronger later on. Don't just tack it now and then not come back to it because that's not good practice. Okay, so we're just going to hold this here and let it dry for a bit. But instead of just holding this and waiting and then holding this and waiting, I'm going to do it all at once. So now you're just going to roll some glue down here. You don't need to go all the way to the top because you'll be cutting some of that later anyway. And then just... Oh gosh. One thing you need to know about fair suit building is you will burn yourself. Um, if I'm lucky, I won't burn myself for a whole suit, but you will burn yourself, basically. You want to use cool melt glue guns instead of hot melt, if you can find them. I mean, for me, that this is just one standard glue gun. It's not cool melt, it's not hot melt. It just comes as that. Um, it's, it's a brand called Loctite, which I'm not sure if anybody has outside of the UK. Um, but they're pretty standard over here. You can buy them in hardware stores and stuff. It's a good glue gun, though. I've been using these for a number of years. This is only my second one in about six or seven years. Um, and they cost about £10, so... Um, you're going to need to hold this all the time while it dries. Do not let this go while it's drying until it's completely cooled, because only then is it at its fullest strength. Um, the curvature of these edges, I, I want to curve that in a bit more. Okay, so that's just about dry now. Um, so there you go, there's... We're getting there, kind of slowly. It might squish around on the head if it looks deformed, it might just be because you've done that. So it's, it's quite easy to just put right. So now we're going to move on to carving the top of the head and turning it into an actual dome shape. Okay, so now we're on to carving the top of the head. Um, this bit can be really awkward, to say the least. Um, right, so where I glued this, I glued it too far up. I need to undo the glue to about here, which is where it's going to start curving. Um, I say undo the glue, I'm just going to cut through it in reality. Um, and then you can start sort of estimating where you're going to put your darts. Your estimates will be different and wrong to what you actually need to do. But it's all just trial and error and taking a look and then stepping back. Okay, one thing you will also need to pay attention to is with these darts you're going to need to curve them. Not cut straight darts because then you'll be left with this big bump in the back of the head. So. It's alright if the curves are choppy, because um, it'll all get evened out and, and you'll be adding foam to the whole head and all sorts of places. So I've actually cut that too much, there's a bit too much of a gap here, see? Um, but that's totally fine, because it'll just get covered up anyway. But now I'm going to glue this one. You don't want to pull the foam too tight, because it'll make... Um, an uncomfortable and distorted fit on the head. So just not too tight and obviously not too loose because then the head will be too big. Too big is not too much of a problem because you can always just add foam but when heads are too small it's a bit of a pain and when heads are an awkward shape they're just so annoying. 
I prefer working onto foam uh, like bucket heads as they're called um, because when I've worked straight onto balaclavas in the past if the the head base underneath isn't proportionally and um, you know just just size accurate um, then when you take it off the head and put it on yourself it'll move and distort which obviously you don't want to happen okay so that one's pretty much done now um, it sticks out a teeny bit um, but there are a lot of other ways you can remedy that. This only has to be rough, just as a rough guide to go underneath. Okay. So I'm gonna squeeze that, and then around about here, it's gonna have to be cut and start curving. Into the head here. And then you can just mirror this to the other side. like so. And then theoretically that should just make a nice neat curve down there. So now we're going to go ahead and glue that one. There's a lot of trial and error and practice in firstly building. Because there's no definitive patterns it's, it's a lot of just trying it out. This is um, just sort of a, a bit of time filling. This is actually going to be a pre-made head in the end. Um, that I'm just trying to make quickly in my free time before I go away on holiday. Um, I'm not sure whether this will be released before the head will be done. Because um, you can see over there I've got a commission to do. I've been working on commissions all day so I've just gone, now I'm going to do some free time stuff. Um, this is actually going to be a saber tooth cat, which my artist just got back to me with the design for, and it looks really cool. I can't wait. It's quite complicated, though. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Ooh, that's a bit overexposed there. Nice smooth curve there. Now we have to do the sides. They're generally a lot smaller than the front and back. Um, but exactly the same. You can, if you want, um, you know, draw a midpoint line like we had on the front and back down the seam lines, just so you can cut evenly on each side. Entirely up to you. You don't have to. but it's quite important to get a nice smooth, not smooth, but curving seam, because um, any sharp angles will show up. But like I say, you don't have to be too nitpicky about it, because we're gonna add foam into it and carve into it. It's not, it's not too difficult or scary to make sure you, you have to get it perfect first time. One thing we're not going to do until later on though is cutting and gluing the, the balaclava. That's not something we're going to be doing yet. Because um, I need to have the eye holes completely cut out and the mouth hole completely cut out for that. Um, I think I am going to film this this head and make another time lapse. Because um, I've had a lot of people asking for different species and stuff. Which I didn't think would be much of an issue because um, I've still showed the basics of, of building a suit head, and it's all the same concept, but 
if people want to see it then I suppose I'll uh, I'll do it for you I've only done what I've done to, to help people out um, if, if people are being helped out by it and they want me to help them more then I shall okay sorry I had to quickly cut the, the video there um, haven't done any more though don't worry I've only just finished cutting this V out So it's exactly the same, just sit and hold it, really. <laughs> One thing I have done before is when I'm waiting for things glue to dry, I'll tape it up or sew it up, up tie it up with string, um, just to hold it there while I can work on other bits instead of wasting my time holding it. Okay, that looks about right. It's not perfect, but like I said, it doesn't have to be at this early stage. And now what we're going to need to do is cut out a panel to go in the top here. There's a bunch of ways you can do the bucket heads. You can either do them like this, where you carve the top and fill in, or you can make them to about here and then you make a cross section that goes across the top so one long strip down there and then bits on the side so you've got a cross along the top and then you fill in the gaps with little triangles so a lot of people use that method personally I haven't um, yeah none of this foam is going to be quite big enough to fit in that gap um, I might have some without having to use the thicker white foam Um, that bit will fit. Great. I keep all of my scraps that are big enough to use for something. Um, just things like eyebrows. You know, I could use that for a bit of eyebrows or bridging the gap between the eyebrows and the cheeks if, if it's too sharp. You can just put a bit of that in there. So, so I keep a lot of my smaller pieces. Um, this bit's not particularly easy because you've got to make sure it's cut right. Um, so what I'll generally do is you've got a point there, and a point there, and a point about there, and a point there. Always mark it a bit farther out than you have to because it's easy enough to trim it down. But what you're going to need to do with this is join up the points but curve them. They have to be curved. If they're straight, then there'll be a big, just, you know, an intersection in the top that's just at an angle. You need it to be curved to meet the curve of the head. So, just cutting outside of the lines. Always cut it too big, first of all. Not loads too big, because you don't want to be wasting valuable foam. but that should just fit in there. That's possibly actually the right size because um, you see it looks a bit too big or, or small or whatever, but by the time you line these edges up, they curve themselves in nicely. It makes that nice curve on the top of the head that you're looking for. So I think I'm just gonna use this. Um, to make it easy, first of all, just a bit of glue, tack it to the middle. That's uh, also going to keep the top of the balaclava on the top of the head, because us, um, you know, when you look inside, it'll all just come away from the top, and you'd rather it, it held its shape in the curve. So just exactly the same as before, just running a bit of glue along the edge. You'll want to do one edge at a time, because holding this edge here will pull this edge up, obviously. So. Just run some glue in there and hold that down until it's dry.
and I make almost all of my head bases this way. The only time I've done it differently is if I've done the cross section in the middle. I've just found this easier because it's less just little little bits. You just have one little bit to add on. Um, but it is slightly more difficult to get the curve right with with the darts. Plus, if you do use the method with the, the cross section, you can use bits of foam like this. This might not have much of a use if I'm not going to be doing that. Because um, this is perfect for that if you've got offcuts. It depends just what size foam you get and what you need to cut out of it, really. Okay. What I'm going to do now is just start connecting these up. Really straightforward and easy. It confuses me why I've had so many people ask about this this part because personally, I, I just find this part the easiest. Um, as long as you've got basic knowledge of how to curve it to fit the head, so you know, just cutting your darts in a curve instead of a straight line, then you should be able to just sort of work it out really. Um, yeah, something I should put out there now I guess. You should expect more tutorials from me. Um, I'm definitely going to try my best to provide more for you. Um, if at the very least just a time lapse that you can just watch and work out for yourself. I would like to provide everything like this actually talking with you, but unfortunately time constraints don't really support that. Just considering I'm a, a full-time university student at the same time. Sorry, just while I'm holding this, I'm trying to multitask. That's, that's pretty much there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this is coming away from here a little bit. Provided it's still securely glued, it won't make a difference. Um, especially because if there's just a little lip here, one, you won't notice this because the fair length will be longer than that um, if you don't put bits of foam over that anyway. And two, you can just trim down the sharp edge like so and then it just flattens it out for you. Never be afraid to just trim bits down. Um, one thing I do a lot is if you know if it's like like this but a bit more harsh you can just cut into that to curve it more. The foam doesn't have to be this thickness all the way around um, but you do want foam all the way around ideally. You do get a lot of people who just build on a balaclava and just build the face, so there's no foam on the back of the head. Personally, I don't like that so much. I don't find it as secure, um, and you can't sculpt on it, obviously. It's just nice to have the freedom of, of having this as the head, and then you build on top of this. But it also keeps its own shape, so you don't need to be wearing it to have the full shape of the head. That also means they make nice display pieces, maybe. Depends on your personal interests, I suppose. Um, it's something you can do is just, just pop it off the top of the head a bit, look. Um, and then there's no tension. But like this little gap here, um, you don't have to fill that in because it won't be noticed. Um, but if I do make more Tuni fursuit head builds, um, I would say you should expect 
uh, less talking from me um, than on that first one because it's all exactly the same process you just use different reference images um, and cut your shapes to different proportions and different animals anatomy okay that's all pretty much there now um, one thing you can do um, making this for yourself feel perfectly free to take it off and try it on as much as you want to make sure it fits you properly um, for me as I, I make them for other people the majority of the time I don't really um, one my head's different to, to everyone else's um, and two I don't particularly want to be putting new things that people will be receiving as something new um, and you know putting it over my face a lot as well just avoid putting it on myself as much as possible. I will put it on to do minor tests or for photos maybe but generally speaking I try and just leave it as perfectly unused as possible but personally I think testing is, is an important phase so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking those sharp corners and I'm just rounding them out a bit only taking little thin slivers of foam off at a time um, like like these tiny little bits because you don't want to take too much off but it just helps to smooth it out a little like I say it won't really make a difference anyway by the time there's fur on it and stuff um, you can see it does there's a little bit of an angle on it here mostly at the back just here um, but again you can just trim that off I'm not going to be able to do it at this angle <coughs> oh sorry guys you can just trim that off to round it out provided you don't make the, th the foam too thin it's perfectly fine there you go just smooths out the edge a little bit actually still not happy with that Um, like I say, none of this is necessary. You don't have to do this just to smooth that out more. It's just me being a little bit nitpicky. But all in all, there you go. That's how you make um basic sort of head dome. I suppose the word is. Just gonna trim these a little bit so it's a bit more curved, a bit more of a smooth transition. Um this is all you need to start building on top of with your fair seat head uh, I don't have any bits to show you but from there you know you can just follow my other tutorials um, well yeah this does lead into my eight part tutorial series so from here you can just carry on with whatever you're going to be making so thank you very much for watching I hope you all found it really helpful please feel free to leave comments if you've got any questions I'll do my best to answer them um, However, I do have an FAQ video, and if it's answered in there, I will either direct you or not reply, I'm afraid, because I am a very busy individual, so I can't reply to everybody's individual messages. Um, not all the time, anyway. I do try. I do read every single one of your comments, and I do thank you so much for them. Um, it, it's just not realistic to get through everybody at the same time. It, it's all been a lot more well-received than I, than I thought, um, so I'm really thankful of... of what everybody's thought of my videos um so thanks very much hopefully this hasn't been too long i think it's been a good oh gee i don't know 40 minutes or so Ooh. um so yeah hope you enjoy my videos do check check by for more tutorials all the time i will be uploading them um i'll post a link to my eight part tutorial series in the description so you can just go from here to there and, and follow on um and i hope to see you soon bye bye guys